for European programs and cultural relations. It's a newly established organization. I will say a few words about our organization. Uh, I, do, I won't tire you much. I will try to be concise and, uh, and fast. I will just say a few words about funding opportunities that the Creative Europe program uh, can have for you. Uh, and let's see some more details. As I told you, the organi our organization was established in 2021, was an initiative by the Republic uh, of Cyprus, by the government, in collaboration with the then Ministry of Education and Culture, and now the Deputy Ministry of Culture. And uh, we, we host, we are mandated by the, by the government to actually host the contact point for two European programs here in Cyprus. The first one is the Creative Europe. I'm pretty sure you are, most of you are familiar with it. The second one is the, is the SERF program. It's, it's, the, it's called the Citizens Equality Rights and Values. It's a, it's a continuation of a previous project program called Europe for Citizens. And also, besides these two contact points, the desk, as we say, the organization is mandated to continue the, the, the work that has been done from, by the Center for Music Research, Innovation, and International Networking, which was a development program, again, initiated by the, by the ministry, and I was where I was working for the past 10 years. Old. So besides the, having the contact points, as I, as I said, we also participate in a number of European international cultural networks and initiatives such as UNIC, the European Union National Institutes of Culture, where we are a national member there, the European Network of Culture and Management Policy, European Union Youth Orchestra, New European Bauhaus, and the, and the new EIT Culture and Creativity. So, uh, how many of you are you familiar with the term of the Creative Europe Desk? Uh, okay, so the Creative Europe is the program that uh, uh, is run by the by the European Commission. It's it's dedicated to culture and media. We will say we we'll see how this is focused on media also. And each country uh, establishes a, what is called a contact point, uh, which is responsible for providing uh, information, disseminating guidance, and uh, uh, providing training uh, and assistance to potential applicants, stakeholders, uh, and beneficiaries of the program. And uh, these, these organizations, these contact points, we carry out their functions independently from one another. So it's, there, there is no central, let's say, organization that runs all the Creative Europe desks. So each, each year, we also apply for funding to the Creative Europe, to European Commission. Uh, we develop a program, a two-year program, uh, and we might get the funding or not. So, Regarding how the European, European Union deals with culture, just to say a few words to understand where the competences of the European Commission lie, uh, because it will help us to understand better where the European Union can intervene and where cannot. So, as early from, from Article 6 of the, of the legal base of the European treaties, we see that the Union the European Union has competences to carry out actions to support, coordinate, and supplement the actions of member states. We see here that the, the role of the European Union is over and above the role of member states. And this, these areas that the European Union can support, coordinate, or supplement is, as we will see, the protection and improvement of human health, industry, and we see already culture. So. We understand already that the European Union cannot intervene directly to culture, especially to cultural production, because culture is a competence that is, uh, is up to the national governments. So the, what the European Union can do is, again, uh, support over and above what a national uh, government can do. Some, some facts about the what is what, what, what we say creative and cultural sectors in the European Union. Uh, there are 1.2 million legal entities that 
actually they are, are active in what is what we say the CCS, the creative culture sectors. 99.9% uh, are small and medium enterprises. That means that 99.9 uh, companies have one up to three employees. So we are talking about very, very small uh, companies. There are around 8.9 million persons employed in the sector. And uh, together, all this sector uh, has a up to 4% of EU value added, which is 7, 775, 77 billion euros. What we mean by creating a cultural sectors in EU? We mean all sectors whose activities, as we say, many of which have potential to generate innovation and jobs, in particular from intellectual property. So we see already that the term the intellectual property is a big thing for the European Union and uh, they base all the all their contribution and all their all their involvement let's say in the sector based on the, the intellectual property so we, we are talking about these organization companies and the sectors that are based on cultural values and artistic and other individual or collective creating expressions and include the development creation, production, dissemination, and preservation of goods and services which embody cultural, artistic, or other creative expressions. We see here already that we, we, we understand this, the whole idea of European Union intervening into the cultural sectors uh, takes this approach of the, of the value chain. Are, are you familiar with, with the term again, value chain? Okay, I, I pretty much I suppose that, especially in the film industry, this is what you pretty much follow. And we will see this this mindset, especially in the in the calls for support for, for the for the, for the media sector. So these sectors, as we said, include literally architecture, archives, libraries, museums, crafts, audiovisual, film, television, video games, and multimedia, cultural heritage, design, festivals, music, etc., etc. So it's a pretty much pretty wide. Uh, term encompassing all all sectors that have an active role and deal with cultural and, and arts. So, uh, a few words about how European Union intervenes into the into the sector. Each every three years, the member states come together and they decide upon a what they call a work plan for culture. So. It's a strategy, a strategic document that lays down the uh, what activities, what uh, actions, and um, what policies the European Union is going to implement in the, ne the next three years uh, in the in the in the CCS. So the guiding principles, as we will see, is that culture has an intrinsic value. Culture contributes to a sustainable social and economic development. Cultural linguistic diversity is a key asset of the European Union and its protection and promotion is central to cultural policy at European level. This is very inter this is very important also for the media sector because as we will see later, especially for a number of calls focused targeted to the to the media sector, this idea of the of the linguistic diversity is is very much in place and in um, uh, of high portals, let's say for, for the for the for the applications. Again, I will I will skip a lot of, of things. So these are the priorities for the current work plan for culture. We, we see already is the sustainability, cultural heritage, cohesion, and well-being ecosystem supporting artists, cultural, creative, professionals, and European content. Again, this reflects on the causes we will see later. Gender equality, international and cultural relations, and culture as a driver for sustainable development. So, what is the overall budget for the uh, Creative Europe, the program, the funding program, works on a seven-year period. So we are now in the period of 2021-2027. The total budget for this period is 200.44 billion euros. 
it's a, it has, I, if I am correct, it's a 30% raise uh, um, comparing with the previous one. And how this, this 2.5, let's say, billion are allocated, we see already that the Creative Europe has three strands, as we say. The first one is culture, which uh, deals with, with, let's say, performing arts, uh, heritage, etc., etc., and has 33% of the total budget. Media has 58%. Uh, again, it's a race compared to the previous one. And what is called cross-sectorial strand, which is uh, a number of calls related to, to, to pan-European pan entities and also the Creative Europe desks and, 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 and also related to journalism, as we will see, has 9% of budget allocation. Uh, again, the objectives of the Creative Europe, as we said before, these are some of the culture strand calls. Uh, the biggest one is the European Cooperation Projects. Uh, this might interest you as well because a, a number of audiovisual productions can be included in this kind of cooperation projects. But I won't tell I, I won't tell you more details about that. I will. I think it's better to to move to the media. Let's say to the media specific calls. Uh, the the other one is literary translations. Again, we see here that European Union tries to support. Uh, translation of, uh, of literary works and especially from what they say smaller languages to to bigger ones. Uh, European cultural networks, platforms, uh, pan-European cultural entities and this is the media. How the media program is structured. We see already that follows the value chain approach. So we have what, what they what they are called as clusters. So we see the content cluster, which focuses on the creation and production of high quality content as the foundation. We have the business cluster, which promotes business innovation, scalability, and talents across the European audiovisual industry value chain. We have the audience cluster, which focuses on connecting European audiovisual works with audiences and support audience development across Europe and beyond. This we will see, uh, especially for the audience cluster, you will see course related to film festivals and, uh, and this kind of, uh, of projects. And also we have the policy support and awareness raising, which is, uh, is focused more on, on government, on, on uh, public policies related to media. And it's focused like the, towards, let's say, designing a common European approach, approach to the main audiovisual policy issues in order to consolidate the European audiovisual single market. Today, we will focus more, I will say a few words about the, some calls from the content cluster. Ah, sorry, and these are some other calls related to the cross-sectorial strand of Creative Europe, innovation labs, journalist partnerships, monitoring, and the Creative Europe desk. So, this is the media uh, strand of the Creative Europe. In total, for this seven year period, it has approximately 1.5 billion euros uh, as budget. And uh, it, as, it aspires to support the Europe's, Europe's audiovisual and film sectors, focused on audiences, new, to new distribution channels, strengthen audience development, focused on content, and especially on collaboration and innovation for high quality works, business, as we said before, and policy. And how are these actually translated into specific calls? Especially for the content cluster. The actions of the content cluster contribute to the objective of the Creative Europe media strand in order to try to encourage collaboration and innovation in the creation and production of the works focuses on actions with a strong European added value. What we mean by European added value, is we mean especially for co-creations that are able to be commercially exploited also outside of Europe. 
So this is the general idea of what European added value is. Encouraging cross-border cooperation among producers and content developers, stimulating innovations. And support cooperation amongst producers from different territory sizes and linguistic areas to ensure a level playing field, foster talent while preserving a stimulating cultural diversity. We see al already here a, a very important thing that European Union, after doing a lot of research and checking the statistics, uh, has identified that, of course, not all countries in Europe are, are able ha or have the, the same production capacity. So in terms of helping um, countries and producers and uh, companies from coming from this lower capacity, lower production capacity countries has uh, developed this kind of collaboration uh, projects in order to help a company from a higher production capacity and a, a company from a lower uh, ca uh, capacity to work together in order to produce, to develop, let's say, um, works. Uh, also very important, pretty much all uh, Creative Europe uh, calls have now uh, these two cross-cutting priorities, so the producers have to identify how they will, how they work in in the frame of, of the EU Green Deal, that will mean support greening practices for the audiovisual ecosystem, and also related to the EU gender equality strategy for a diverse and inclusive audiovisual ecosystem. How? How the companies will do this, it's, we will see in a few minutes. So these are, the, again, the four uh, substrands of the content cluster. We have the European slate development and the European mini slate development. Are you familiar with the term slate? What is so the slate, it's a collection of, of works to be developed through this application. For the slate development, uh, it's, uh, which is open to all countries, so the application has to identify, has to develop three, minimum three, maximum five works. And the mini slate which is open only for the countries from the lower production capacity, tire, it's two to three works. Then we have the second call, which is the European core development which, as I was saying before, is, is focused to encourage co-development and cooperation between companies, organizations from different countries to, to work together and share knowledge, experience, and uh, share the, the work. The third one is the video games and immersive content development. And the fourth one is the TV and online content, just to say a few words to, to have an idea. Only the, the fourth, the TV and online content, is able to cover production costs. So for the other three, the first three, it's only development. The uh, European Union supports the development of works, and we will see the, the amounts and how, how this is done. As I, as I said before, the three, the, mini, the slate and mini slate development, code development and video games, have the aim to increase capacity for producers to develop projects with the potential for wide circulation, foster competitiveness of European independent production companies and increase their economic weight in the market, support cooperation, support development, production of high quality, and for the TV and online content, we see the strength of the independence of producers in relation to broadcaster and digital platforms. So by definition, we, we see here that in order to support, let's say, the content creators, the producer, to be kind of independent from mainstream and big broadcast and digital platforms, they are able to support also the production. So, a few words about the code development. Um, this is a pretty new, actually, a, a new call was initiated, was, has started in 2021. And the background for this, let's say, call, uh, it's that actually 
by checking the statistics of the previous uh, European Union in the previous program ha had a, a call which, which was specifically focused on development of a single project. Uh, and by checking the statistics, they saw already that the majority of past applications were also already envisaged as European co-productions. They already the producers we are trying to find ways to work together. So, uh, the, the idea is to focus on transnational cooperation where, where support from national programs is limited. How do we do that? Let's, say if, let's see first the, the, the objectives and which activities can be funded. It's to support the cooperation among European production companies that are developing works with strong international audience potential always have this in mind that we are talking about being able to pro to develop works that will have a, a wide international presence. So the core development is, the de for, is for development of a single animation, creative documentary or fiction project with high creative value, cultural diversity, wide cross-border exploitation potential, and they are intended for commercial ex exploitation. We mean here by for cinema release, TV broadcasting, digital platforms, or multi-platform, etc. So we already we see that this is not intended for works that are about to be screened in in festivals. So some requirements for the for for the for the application. So the the project must be co-developed by a minimum of two European independent audiovisual production companies. We will see what we mean by independent uh, in a while. And there must be already a signed co-development agreement specifying the division of tasks and the collaboration of creative aspects. So this is very important. It's not, it's not part of the application, it's not, but it, it's an annex that the uh, the, the applicants have, must be able to showcase that they have already have signed this code development agreement amongst the, uh, their partners. Applicants must develop a, a stronger innovative collaboration at creative financing level, must develop strategies for marketing and distribution from the, out, from the very beginning. So even if this is a, a development focus Call, we see already that the evaluators ask to, to see a, a strong strategy for marketing and distribution. And as we said before, related to the cross-cutting priorities, they must develop adequate strategies to ensure a more sustainable and more environmentally respectful industry, and also to ensure gender balance, inclusion, diversity, and representativeness. What is the expected in impact of, let's say, successful applicants, applications, that there is an increased collaboration at the development stage between European production companies from different countries and from different markets, and hence an increased number of co-production. There is a stronger position on European international markets for companies selected for funding, so the companies that will get selected will raise and their capacity, and there is an increased quality, feasibility, cross-border potential market value for the projects. Uh, this was the deadline for 2021, but uh, 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 these calls come every uh, are published every year, so we expect the next call to be around March, with a deadline again. Uh, uh, late August, let's say. So, the budget allocated for this call is 6 million euros. Uh, it's pretty much around 100 uh, applications that will get funded. And uh, we will see, here we see who are the eligible participants. So, the uh, companies, the partners must be independent must be European, so must be based as a legal entity in Europe, and they are must be audiovisual production companies. 
There, ha there has to be a project leader, which is called the coordinator, and minimum one partner. Minimum two entities having their legal seat in at least two media countries. Just to, uh, we, we, uh, to, sh to tell you that what the media countries, the Creative Europe media countries, are not only the 27 members, EU members, but there are also seven additional members. Uh, it's the countries that are now trying to get into European Union, also Iceland and Norway. We'll see, I will see, uh, show you the list. So, and the coordinator can only submit one application for either slate, mini slate, or code development. So have to choose if you're, you cannot apply more. What do we mean independent? No majority controlled by an audiovisual media service provider, either on shareholding or commercial terms. And majority we talk about more than 25% of the share capital. European, as we said, establishing in media countries. So in order, for an applicant to be eligible. The applicant, the coordinator, must demonstrate that has an experience in producing international and distributed works. This is something that has been uh, an issue of many discussions and many debates, actually, especially for companies coming from lower production capacity uh, countries, because most of time, most of the time, it's not easy for a company to be eligible, and as we will see, the the applicant must have produced at least one previous work since 2015 for for the for the next call. Just to have in mind that sh that respect should be an animation, a fiction, or a documentary, either a one-off or a series of minimum 25, 24 minutes. If there is, if it's, a, it's a, if it's a work on an online year format, there is no minimum duration. And must be actually released in cinema, broadcast, or TV, or made available on digital platforms in at least three countries other than their own before the deadline for submission. So it's a pretty strict, let's say, uh, <laughs> requirements. But uh, there are other attempts during the recent years, as I saw, to, to find a ways, find ways to overcome, let's say, these obstacles for, for companies coming from lower capacity, lower production capacity countries. So the company must have been the sole production company, or in case of co-production, the major co-producer in the financing plan or the delegated producer, or, which is very important, uh, if a CEO of the company, uh, let's say that you have a, that is a company that is, it's new, it was established, let's say, one year ago, if the CEO of the company or the a major shareholder of the company has been credited personally as producer or as delegated producer in a production that respect the, the three previous requirements, can be eligible for the for applying. Uh, so previous works for the eligible participants must be detailed in the media database. If the previous work is ineligible, I mean the work that was that follows the three requirements is ineligible, so the application is ineligible. So keep that in mind. And the information provided in the media database must be correct and proof must be available upon request. This is a major change in comparison with the previous project where each applicant had to provide the proof upon the time of, apl of application. This, the change now is that you don't need to provide this proof of, let's say, disseminating your work to the three countries to, to film, to cinemas, etc. But you, you need to have this information and upon the request, you have to be able to provide it. So, eligible activities in this frame, as we said, is the core development of a single project. The eligible works is animation, creative documentary, or fiction projects, one-off or series, focused, again, for commercial exploitation. And there are some 
duration limitations. And we will see if it's an animation and it's a it's it's focus it's for, for animation sorry documentary or fiction that is focused on <coughs> disseminated and released in cinemas has must have a minimum duration of 60 minutes if it's focused on tv and digital platforms for the animation is 24 minutes minimum the documentary is 50 minutes and the fiction is 90 minutes and if it's an interactive non-linear project there is no minimum duration and important again the first day of principal photography of the project must be minimum 10 months after the deadline of application so again this 10 months is, is not arbitrary let's say it's not something that someone came up but again based on the statistics uh, they saw that you need most of the pro most of the project that gets submitted and, the, and get uh, they are successful most usually have this 10 to 20 months, let's say, after the deadline of this period in order to be able to, to start the principal photography. As we say, minimum 10 months. Why? Also, we have to do that grants shall not be awarded retroactively for actions already completed. Uh, and also have in mind that the target for, for signing the, the grant agreement that the, com the successful, let's say, applicants will sign the commission for the funding pretty much take nine months after the deadline of submission. So from the deadline of submission for the, of the application until you sign this uh, agreement is pretty much nine months. So, uh, some the activities again. The coordinator must own the majority of rights, and also including rights of adaptation, if relevant, to the project through a signed contract. So we have to have this kind of signed contract. The duration of the project normally it's not more than thirty months, so two and a half years, but extensions are possible. And uh, the start of the action. The default is after the signature of the, uh, of the grant agreement, so it's after the, this nine months period that we need to, the European Commission needs to evaluate and inform and prepare the, the grant agreements, but might be possible for, for applicants to actually um, ask for the project to start on the date of submission of the, of the, of the application but this has to be justified duly and uh, must be approved by the European Commission. So what are ineligible projects? It's a pretty big list, as you will see. So no live recordings, no TV games, no talk shows, cooking shows, magazines, tourism documentaries, making of, reports, animal reportage, new programs, promotional works, institutional productions, music videos and video clips. It's a pretty, pretty big list. But and this, this is the same list of ineligible projects as from the previous project, the previous pro program, sorry. So, regarding to the financing, the, fi the, the, the financed is based on what is called lump sum. Lump sum is it's, it's the total amount of money that you get if you get uh, if you're successful, and is fifty percent of the of the total budget of the application. So if, let's say if you if your application it's one hundred thousand euros, the maximum amount of money that you will get it's is fifty thousand euros. And also, here is a to the maximum am amount. So for each project, it's 60,000 euros per application. So this is the maximum amount of money that you can get for this development, for the core development. In cases of TV series with intended production budget of over 20 millions, you might get up to 100,000 euros. And 
this uh, this funding is is given the 70 percent of the funding if you are successful is given uh, the moment you sign the grant agreement so you start with this 70 percent of 60,000 euros, let's say, and the, the rest, 30 percent, is um, is financed after the the submission of the final report of the applicants. So this is was pretty much about the core development. I don't know if you have any any, any questions that I can ask, I can, can answer, or you, you want me to to go can through. I ask you just one yes. Question? What it's about you get the development financing, but then uh, you don't find uh, the, the rest of the budget to make the thing? This has to do with, uh, you have to provide actually, if you see, ah, fair, let, me, let me start from another point. The first thing that you have to do for this kind of project is to go, I will, say, I will show you later, the, what is called the funding and tender platforms. This is, the, this is the website of the European Union that has all the information for all the, all, all the, the funding calls. Where you will find the call document. Here, the, this call document is like the Bible, let's say, of the... So you have to pretty much write in the application and you have to showcase that you really are trying to, to find the, the money for the production. So uh, this is the idea, that you, you need to provide something like not a proof, not a, an agreement, but you have a plan to, to find the money. If you don't, it's up to, it's up to how, how you present the, your application. Uh, but again, keep in mind that this is focused on the development, not the project. Yes. The most important thing in this project is how to write the project, <coughs> the proposal. <coughs> so it's a method that some offices are uh, tra uh, uh, traded about it. So the better uh, way is to find uh, someone who is involved with the European project. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you don't have any luck. So, and another thing is the collaborations. European Union um, wants a European country and partners from different countries outside Europe, not especially Europe, no, you know. No, but not for this. Not for this, not for eh? this. this is only not for, for this. all. It's only for countries. The 27 EU countries and, okay. and the seven. Uh, what's the uh, uh, Under. Um, who are the seven countries? Uh, Albania. It's Albania. It's it's Serbia, Serbia Norway, Iceland. Uh, I, I will find the list now Nine. to show. We were uh, 28. Now we are 27. 27. So. Yeah. Here are the. Ah, Bosnia, bravo. These are the seven associated countries to the media, as you will see. These are the 27 EU countries, and this Group A and Group B colorings is what I was telling you before for the lower capacity, for lower production capacity. So <coughs> the Group B is the lowest, which Cyprus is one of them. Greece is part of the Group A. So Greece also is. Uh, <laughs> yeah, have the, yeah, yeah, but the, it's not based on finance. It's, it's based on production, actually, and how many works were released from these countries. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Let me show you again. This was the previous project, the previous funding period, okay? Uh, yeah, usually the evaluation takes up to three months, three to four months, and then you get notified. But as I said, the, from the deadline of submission until if you are successful, you sign the agreement, they are, most of the time it's nine months. Nine months. Nine, nine months, yeah. Yeah, you have to think this is very advanced, let's say, and, and start thinking about your pro 
Uh, I had some date, but I cannot see them now. But yes, pretty much is, this is the period. So the deadline, they need three months to evaluate, uh, ask for clarification if they are needed, and then the nine months is the maximum, let's say. But as I told you before, if you can ask for the project period to start from the date of submission, so if you are, if you think that you can get the, the project, so you can kind of skip this nine month period and start the, the the project period. When we say project period, we mean that you can have eligible expenses during this period. So if you if you ask for the, the project period to start from the date of submission of the application, if you are successful, you can. Uh, you, you can get, you can put these expenses that you had up to the, let's say, the date of the agreement in the in the eligible expenses. So you get the money, you, you, you are able to get the money for these amounts. Again, as I told you, the, the, the funding is based on lump sums. So if you, if you are funded, if you are successful, the European Union does not ask for invoices. So it's not an invoice based. Um, evaluation it's it's based on deliverables what we mean by deliverable is that if you you you, you kind of structure the work that is going to be done in what what they call work packages these are these are project management uh, methodologies actually in terms uh, let's say and if for each work package you are uh, obliged to send to give an, a deliverable to the European Union. To sh actually, what is a deliverable? Is something, is a proof that you have, you have accomplished and you have done what you have promised. For me, let's say here, just to, to, to say an example, because we are also getting fund, funds for being here, for me, the deliverable for this project is to have some photos, to have this uh, list of participants. A proof. a proof that we done, we have done what we have promised. And some few words, uh, a few words about European slate, and mini slate, just to again to have an idea. So here we are talking about mono beneficiary works. What mono beneficiary works means? It's it's applications from a single company. It's not it's not de co-development, no collaboration. So the focus in reducing risk, investing talent, and creativity and support growth. As I said before, sorry, the slate is is for all countries. The mini slate is for lower capacity, lower production capacity countries. Here are the objectives for the for the call: foster the competitiveness, increase their economic weight, increase the capacity of producers to develop project and potential to circulate throughout Europe and beyond. Especially the beyond is a, is the key term here. Funded activities. Excuse me, can you go back to that slide? Yep. What's facilitate European and international, international co-production? Mm -hmm. International. Because here you are able to work with other companies, mm -hmm. even if you are the sole company that is applying. You you can you must actually you are um, encouraged to to work together with other. So non-European. And also non-European. Yeah, but the the, the applicant. If, uh, must, be, must be from you. Mm -hmm. Again, funded activities that can activities that can be funded. Again, the development it's pretty much the same as previous as the previous call. Animation, creative, documentary, fiction projects, and optional here is it's a key thing here. You can uh, check it out. They can support the development and production activities of a short film by an emerging director. And also, the, but this has to be over and above, and uh, and be part of the slate. No, not not only one, but here they can support also the production, and we will see what they define as an emerging director. So activities again, we will see, we see here develop strategies for marketing and distribution again from the very early stages. 
we see that there is a strong focus on having these strategies for marketing and distribution of the works. I encourage to cooperate, including co-develop with operators from different media countries, expand their activities, develop adequate strategies to ensure sustainable and more environmental respect for industry, the same as, as earlier. Here, the, here are the differences. For the slate, it's three to five plus the optional short film. So it's a, it's a bundle of, of works together. The access open to all media for the slate, limited to LCC countries from the mini slate. The previous experience as before that, I mean the commercial distribution of works for the slate must, must be two previous works, not, not just one. For the mini slate, just one. For the budget, the total budget for the slate is 18 million, for the mini slate is 5 million. The deadline for the slate, th that was the previous deadline. The, the slate is still open, it has a deadline on 23rd of January, 23. The mini slate is closed, but they will publish again the new one. Uh, again, participants eligible independent European production companies with experience, only application by single applicants, and they are affiliated entity, only one application as applicant, <coughs> and must, you, you must have not have been a beneficiary of a mini slate from the last year call. So if you have been successful in the mini slate application the previous year, you cannot apply again for the same type, for the same project. Uh, again, what are the dependents? You know, some more details. The countries, as we said. Again, we see here there's the same requirements regarding the, the experience. So you have to, this. Is, this is obligatory. So you don't you don't get, let's say, assessed on this, but you have to showcase that you have, in order to apply, you have to have, to have this experience. And again, keep in mind, we're talking about religious commercial nature, no screenings during festivals. <coughs> uh, the same here, the same durations apply here also. And the same the durations, and here are the, some details related to the development of a short film, okay? So, over and above the three to five works for the slate and the, the two to three for the mini slate, you can include a sh the production of a short film. It should be a short animation, documentary, or fiction work of maximum 20 minutes. No previews, no, ad no pilots, no trailers. I'm not talking about that. So, and what we said about emerging talent, how, what is the definition of an emerging talent? So actually, it's, it's a profession, it's something, it's someone with has not yet directed a project that would be eligible for support in the slate development. So we are, we are talking about the slate and uh, in the mini slate, we are talking about productions that must be able to be commercially exploited again, as we said. But if a director has not yet part, uh, directed one of these works, can be eligible as an emerging talent, so can be eligible in applying for also production funding through this, uh, through this call. Again, the same deadlines and the same uh, information. The duration of the project normal is not more than 36 months, so three years. So have to develop the strategy. The ineligible projects again are the same as previously. And here related to financing, again we're talking about lump sums which depend on the genre type and size of the project. And now uh, we will show you some details here. So the maximum you grant is the sum, 
the sum of lump sums that apply to each individual project. So I mean, each one of the three to five or two to three. And the pre-financing again here is 70%. So if you're successful after the signing, signing of the agreement, you get the 70%. And here are the, the financing. So if we're talking about one-off or series, this changes the, the total amounts. So if we're talking about, let's say, three animations, three one-off animations, okay? If we are, if let's say it's, it's a company from a lower capacity, lower production capacity country applying for three, for the development of three one-off animation, it's 55,000 euros for each and for each work. If it's a documentary, it's 30,000. And if it's a fiction, based on the total budget of the, of the, uh, of the estimated production budget, you, you get these figures. And if we're talking about a series, we see below that the, this amount changes. And for the short film, that's the maximum amount you get, you get 10,000 euros. So this is pretty much very fast uh, introduction on, on the co-production and the Slade and Mini Slade calls. I encourage you all to go check the, the funding and tender opportunities pro portal. I will show you now. Uh, So, if you, if I, I, I cannot tell you the, the web address because it's, it's, it's kind of huge way European Union web addresses. But if you if you Google funding and tender opportunities portal, you will come up to this platform, which, as I told you, has uh, compiled all the all the funding or, or the European Union funding opportunities or the funding programs, and you will go and you. You will need to check the Creative Europe, let's say, which is there, and you go and you will see, you will be presented with all the calls that come from the Creative Europe.